Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today we are going to give you six practical ways that we war against the flesh to protect our hearts from becoming defiled. Friends, there is so many situations and so many different things that come at us. There are circumstances that are going on all over the world. And we that believe, we that have been redeemed, must guard our hearts from being defiled. The Bible clearly gives us a nugget. It's a golden nugget given by the preacher named Solomon. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 is so powerful. It is the remedy. It is the thing, the serum, the medicine that we all need to understand you are in a fight within. And if you ever forget you will lose and find yourself believing on the Lord Jesus, but not apprehending the kingdom, which is right living, right standing with God, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me break that down real quick and clear, my friend. We that believe, we are not like regular people. We have God's spirit in us and we should have and, and manifest and emanate even through the tests, trials and traumas of our life. We should be manifesting, apprehending the joy of the Lord, the peace of God that passes understanding. That's our portion. That's what separates us, my friend. And if you are not experiencing peace and joy, you got to look at righteousness. You got to look at Christ Jesus. Have you truly repented from your sin? That's the number one thing that you got to pay attention to. But I'm going to give you these six things. Proverbs is a powerful scripture. It tells us what and how to do. This is what it reads. Above all else, Guard your heart for everything you do flows from your heart. Now, it's important that you catch this, my friend. Everything we do, it flows out of that heart. And remember the scripture that I gave in yesterday's exhortation where Jesus tells us what defiles us. Evil thoughts, murders, adultery, fornication, thefts, false witness, and blasphemy comes from your heart, okay? So here's how we guard and gird up the heart. Number one, you must identify your behavior. You must do a self-audit to, to secure the ground of your heart, like a security guard. When they come into a hostile situation, a potential situation where someone could be harmed or something could go down, they have to secure the location. They have to report back. In other words, you and I have to stay in agreement with God that what we did, what we thought, it was evil. It was wrong. you got to Cut it down to the ground, friend. You you, you got to call what you was thinking, what it is, evil. And this is where most people lose right out the gate because of pride and ego tripping. Ego, E-G-O, edging God out. When you edge God out, friend, and you won't give him your mind, and you won't de deal with the real you, the real thoughts that spring forth from you, friend, till you can do that, you cannot gird up. It takes humility. It takes honesty to identify your behavior and know, friend, it has come from your own heart. Ooh, friend, it is the most challenging part of being a believer is calling yourself out. That's right. Number two. So number one, you got to be willing to humble yourself and identify your negative behavior and your thoughts. 
You got to do a self audit and it's easy to say, no, so-and-so, they just this, that, and that. You don't see that you are a critical spirit. You don't see that deep down in your heart, you kill and murder people with your thoughts in your mind. And then you speak it out your mouth. Oh, friend, you got to call it out. Number two, you must be willing after you call it out to confront it. If you are having thoughts of something you know in the spirit is wrong, till you first identify it, you can't call it out. You can't confront it. And how do we confront our evil thoughts? We, we renounce them. We say out loud, I will not think on that. You got to confront it. You got to wrestle it down and say, I'm not going here. You could be tempted to go off into all types of rabbit holes because you've been offended. You, 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 here's an example. You have a right to go to a corporate office and tell that an employee did a certain thing. But you choose to confront those thoughts, wrestle them down and say, you know what? I'm not writing no letters. I ain't got time. And I'm going to simply forgive because they don't know what they're doing. See, this is where you practically confront your propensity and proclivity to move out towards the thing that will take you captive. Because it's going to take you captive. Friend, do you know how much energy it takes to fight somebody? How much time to write letters and do all these things we can do to stir up that 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 nest of frustration and anger and unfor it takes a lot of energy. So beloved, you got to secure the ground by identifying the behavior, confronting uh, or or the thoughts. You have to confront them. Number three, you have to be willing to eliminate people and things in your life that is against God. When you are in relationships with people who don't like God, you, you're too close for comfort, shall I say, because we, we can't get away from people that don't love God, friend. They're everywhere. But when you call a whoremonger, a liar, when you call someone that is mean-spirited, your best friend, you know they sleep around, you know that they will murder people with their mouths, and these are your best friends. Friend, you will not be able to secure the ground of your heart and gird up when you keep entertaining these people as your, quote, best friends. Mm -mm. You cannot ally with the devil's kids and think you're going to escape being defiled. Number four, that daily self audit. The reason we do it daily, friends, is because the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So if you're angry and you don't confront why you're angry and then deal with why you need to let it go. Friend, this could go on for weeks and months and years. People constantly trying to harm other people, constantly trying to stir up dissension because they won't go down into the corridor of their soul and do a real self audit. We don't even like getting audited in the natural. Who wants to be audited by the uh, internal revenue? That means close examination, giving an account for everything. And that's why many are defeated. Because you don't have the humility to say, it's me. I'm jacked up. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have did it. And God is like, until you do. Come on now. Until you do. The Bible says, work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. Number five, you got to take captive these thoughts. You got to wrestle them down. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse five tells us that we got to do it. My friend, Paul said, you got to wrestle and fight and take captive every thought. That means everything you think that's negative and evil and vile and wrong, you got to wrestle it and hold it captive. Don't let it grow. Come on. Because your heart is like a garden and whatever seeds drop in it, it's up to you to weed and feed. Weed it out. You got to take it captive and weed it out. Last but not least, my friend, to gird up the heart, to protect the heart, to, to, to protect yourself from being defiled is unforgiveness. If you're not willing to forgive, you're a dunner. You're a dunner, friend. You're not going to make it. You're not going to experience the abundant life with Christ, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You will not experience it. 
And remember, you practice forgiveness. We're practicing forgiveness every day. Every day, think about it. There's always an opportunity to be offended. There's always an opportunity to get an ass stanky attitude. It's an opportunity every day. But you don't go in on the job ignoring people, rolling your eyes, playing the I don't want to talk to you to your spouse. And you walk around for days and weeks in silence and you ain't got nothing to say. No, you need to grow up. You need to you need to walk out the word. You need to do the word, my brother or sister, if that's how you're behaving. So when something big come along, you already been practicing forgiveness and you know how to wrestle that thing down. Because guess who has forgiven us? time and time and time again. Our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ suffered that our Father would pardon us and give us what we don't deserve, eternal life. So beloved, we don't take that for granted. If you are depressed, if you are constantly confused, you don't know which way to go in your life, you need to start with these things right here, that you are not confronting the real deal. You're ignoring very serious matters that's going on in your own heart. And nobody, and I mean nobody, my friend, can come down in that heart and deal with your your, your past hurts and pains and sufferings. No one, not even God, because God expects you to forgive. That's right. And the reason most people are miserable and entertaining murder and evil thoughts is because you have forgotten about all the garbage you have done against God. That's why it's easy for you to hold grudges. It's called pride. 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 That's why most people are miserable. Pride ego tripping, edging God out, refusing to be a doer of the word. You hear the word, but you don't do it. Enough has been said. Secure the grounds. Secure the ground of your heart, my friend. Secure it. Lock it down. Check every room, every window, and shut all that stuff down because the abundant life in Christ is peace and joy. Enough said. Till next time, my friend. God bless.